Hey everybody, it's Brent in Central Arkansas. If you watched my last video you saw when we were in Canada, I planted out some uh, tomatoes and peppers. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make it across the border on the way back. I didn't think about it until the last minute. But we did, and I got the tomato plants back, and they're nice and big and healthy now, but I need something to plant them in. And I'm really looking forward to this winter's growing season and what I've decided to grow them in. So let's get started. I'm in my driveway and I brought the boards out here. It's the most convenient to cut on this chilly day. I'm glad the sun's out. But I've got one by fours here and that's going to be the structure of the frame of the water culture bed. And I've decided to make it 18 inches tall and across this way and 18 inches wide. And that's going to be the dimensions of it. Now the long side of the um, winter grow room is going to be 10 foot and the short side is going to be 6 foot and that should fit in there nicely. I've assembled the back side of the long leg and this is what it looks like. I've made the material lightweight as I could imagine and still be sturdy enough to handle uh, the weight of the water which is going to be a good bit um, and I'll calculate that when it's uh, all said and done. But this will lift up and uh, there'll be another side to it and it'll be connected by two by fours on the bottom. All of it to be as light as possible and it's going to be connected in an L shape. One whole platform water in the seamlessly in, in the entire L. The outer frame complete and connected Long side to short side. If you look at the bottom, I've got some boards here. They're attached and that'll keep the water from pushing out the sides. But over here, I filled in in between the one that are attached and they're just sitting on the floor loosely. And that's because I'm going to put a piece of foam on top of it, three quarter inch probably, maybe half inch, and um, and that'll support the total water across the bottom. It's time to line it, and I'm doing that with the dowel foam. And the plastic is going to be inside against the foam, and I still have to do the bottom. I want to show you here with this dowel foam, they also make a extruded polystyrene um, foam as well that Cornell makes, it's pink. This one I got at Lowe's and you can get the other at uh, Home Depot, the pink version. But all you need to do is score about halfway down into the foam across, following the line carefully because you want a nice straight line. And then once you've done that, it's easy to snap. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. Just like that. It's real easy. It has plastic on it that you can remove afterwards, but piece of cake. Alright, I've got the entire thing lined with foam. You can see the brand right there. And the bottom is definitely um, secure so that the water weight won't bend it out. But on the top, there needs to be something uh, that also keeps it from bowing out. And so I made these easily removable that go on the top and it keeps them from spreading. And they're anchored to this, which provides stability all the way down. So, the, um, those top rails right there keep it from bowing out and also it makes it really easy to put the, um, the top half inch piece on that will hold the actual plants and put the, before even that, put the liner on. So you can see the liner, the foam I put in here is not all the way to the top and that is so I can put the plant foam on top of here and it'll rest within the frame and on top of this lip here on both sides. 
this is the liner I'm going to put in. It's six mil heavy duty black, and you can get these at any of the big box store. Um, this one I got from Lowe's, and it was over near the gutters and plastic gutters and metal gutters and stuff like that on that aisle. <laughs> it even says only at Lowe's. Anyway, obviously I don't get anything from Lowe's. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. Right now I'm filling it up and I want to put the transplants in there in the next few days because they're getting pretty big. As you can see there. And I need the water to get um, acclimated to the temperature in here. And, uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and do this before I make the top. And um, yeah, just do that and make sure all the wrinkles, I get the wrinkles and stuff out tomorrow. I got the majority of it pretty, pretty good. But I definitely need to work it over some more and cut off the excess. I'll do that tomorrow. All right, I've cut the foam top. I've got this open, this side, so that the sun can warm this up for another day or two. I cut the plastic to about this level here, and then I put it behind the foam. Tucked in there nicely because I like the overall look of it, and I don't want to be distracted by the plastic hanging down. So now I need to drill the plant holes where they're going to go in. I've used that one inch hole saw to drill the holes and the growing positions. And I've got one inch neck cups all lined out. And there is 140, no, excuse me, not 149, 49 growing positions in this L shaped water culture bed. 49. It's uh, kind of a nursery right now. I imagine that I will just leave a lot of them blank when plants start getting mature and only grow out of the useful spots. So I got options with that many holes. I'm out here on my deck and the water culture beds that I'm making are an aerated version. A non-aerated version uh, is typically called cracky. Um, some aerated versions are called deep water culture, some are called shallow water culture, depending on not whether or not air is added to them. It can be deep water culture or shallow water culture, but not aerated. Uh, the terminology can be confusing, but it's all water culture. And you'll see here that this is PVC shaped like the beds, and I drilled holes along it, the number 57 drill bit, and that's going to become my source of oxygen, my bubbler if you will. This you may recognize if you watch my PVC watering system. This is the same thing, except I'm going to do it also as a within the water culture bed as a form of adding air. So instead of water pumping through it, air is going to be pumped through it. And it should create some nice bubbles. Let's turn this up just for fun. Take a look at it. You can see it's squirting out both sides all the way along. Now we'll go add it back into the water culture bed. All right, we've got the bubbler in. It's obviously on. The lift produced by the pump, which is hanging up there, was pretty significant. So I had to use, I knew there was going to be some lift, but I didn't know it was that, that much. So I had to use um, some um, vacuum sealer bags with with sand that I sealed up, uh, completely sealed up, uh, double sealed each end to make sure. So I've got that down and <clears throat> I didn't particularly care for the loss of volume and the grow space because of the weight, but it is what it is. Okay, so we got some good bubbles here. Um, let me talk about the pump first. 
this is the pump I'm using and instead of using the hose that came with it I bought some more hose from Lowe's attached it directly and it comes down here to this valve I also have a shutoff valve here that I can lower the bubbles just by turning the valve here so I wanted to do that also uh, this configuration I'm going to talk about in a minute but the pump you can see that the intake is right here and it's above the heater so as heat rises it's sucking in hot air into the pump and it's pumping warm air warm not hot warm air in here which hopefully will help with um, the cold um, especially when the radiator is over here this is one of two system, uh, heating I have a backup over here too it's uh, right there and they're on timers um, well this one is the radiator this one's not on a timer it's got a um, it's on thermostat but uh, anyway I digress so I've got the valves here and this particular valve controls the air inlet I can cut that completely off and open this one and you can see a hose here that goes out there you can see the hose out there that way I can drain it I'd use my um, siphon that's out there I'll show you that in a minute or I can even fill it all right I got the siphon going it's a little better than I thought let's go outside and take a look It's coming out of that uh, tank, and it's about, well, it's not about, it's pretty darn close to 162 gallons. I uh, believe I showed you the specs. If I haven't showed you the specs, it'll be at the end of the video. I've already figured that out. So you can see how fast it's coming out just by draining. Uh, so you should be able to fill um, a little bit faster than that. And that'll be, it'll make sure that I don't have a water incident inside there. So it's a little extra um, valve on there, a little extra PVC, but totally worth it to me. So outside the grow room, I've got my fill tank. This is my uh, where I mix the nutrients, and it flows down into the water culture bed. It used to flow into the reservoir last year where the pump and pumped it out to the plants but this year I'm doing it a different way. Let me see if I can move the camera up so you can see. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, it's a little dark. But so yes that feeds through the wall. Behind here and over to this float valve. And I've used these float valves for a really long time. And I just got it zip tied to the post here or to the PVC here. I didn't want to hard mount it. I don't want to put any holes in it anywhere or anything like that. So I I put it uh, directly mounted to this with zip ties. I put two of them there um, just to make sure it doesn't snap and cause a big old mess. So anyway, when the float valve lifts up like this it shuts off the flow when it's down I don't know if you can see that let me see I don't want to get the camera wet maybe you can see it flowing onto my finger better see that it fills up automatically and it'll come to the level whatever level I set it at and um, we'll do the final adjustment in a little bit but um, so that's the float valve and that'll keep this thing constantly filled to a certain level. It's time to add the nutrients. I've got Master Blend and three one gallon jugs. These are formerly milk jugs. And each one has 50 grams, excuse me, 120 grams of Master Blend. Uh, each one has that in it and that equates to 50 gallons. So. 3 equals 150 gallons. I've got the bubbler on and uh, the air pump on and that's what's going to distribute or mix 
the liquid as I pour it in here. Just like that, piece of cake. Spread it out. When I get through with this master blend, I'm going to add the Epsom salt. Also let that mix for about 10 minutes by the bubbles. And then we'll add the calcium nitrate. It's best to mix the three different uh, pieces together when you're mixing it. Three different uh, nutrients to get uh, separately when you're mixing in this type of uh, uh, not density but uh, concentration. <laughs> Mine's not working. Okay, so I'm gonna get with the master blend, and next is Epsom salt. This is Epsom salt. Didn't have to fill it all the way up with Epsom salt because I've only got uh, 60 grams in each container there. Each gallon jug. I'm going to pour it in here. The uh, I'm not going to record the mat, uh, the calcium nitrate, which is the third and final thing to add in it, but it is 120 grams per container, just like the master blend. So master blend 360, calcium nitrate 360, and Epsom salt 180, and you divide it in, and uh, liquefy it in the jugs first, and then you pour it in while it's bubbled. Or that's what I did anyway. You can see how tall these things are in these little one inch cells. They need to go into the water culture bed. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this fork, it's just a regular household fork, and I'm going to I put it down between the sides here and I lift up uh, one of these just like that. And I'll take and I'm going to dunk it in this bucket to rinse all the uh, potting mix off of the roots. And then I'm going to stick it in one of those little one inch net cups and place it in there. So here's three of them. This is what it looks like without it being in the net cup. And this is what it looks like when you route them into the net cup and then put the uh, roots down. And that will go easily into the nutrient. I wanted to show you this little gun I got. I use it in my RV to check temperatures of the brakes and tires when I travel. But it's good for checking the temperature and anything. So I just pull the trigger here and turn it on. And you can see I'm holding it at 62 degrees of water. And I like that that's just about what I want. So I took some plants, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. These are my test plants. I'm going to grow them in here for two days before I put the rest in here. So that's what they look like. You can see that the one inch net cup is plenty big enough now at this young stage. And I put a piece of foam, little pieces I cut with a razor knife here, and um, I wedged them in here to provide support until they can be strung up on the strings there or in the case of peppers an alternative support potentially but um, yep that's that's what I'm going to do I'll come back in a couple days and um, we'll see what they look like well I, I won't come back in a couple days I'll bring you back after a couple days I'm going to come out every few hours as I always do because I just love being in these uh, involved in gardening winter gardening and here in the grow room so I'll bring you back